Hello all, thank you all for joining the BotCamp demo day. We are doing the second cohort for our HummingBot BotCamp. And for those who are new to how the BotCamp works, it's basically a four to six weeks of cohort-based learning program for people to learn about how to create their own market making scripts using HummingBot scripts. And within the four weeks, we will go through some basic concepts from quant theories to understanding the code base to different examples of which you can run your scripts and you will design your own script that you will implement on the demo day. People will share the scripts that they've done. We have from our current cohort, awesome people who are interested in crypto, who are startup founders, who are already helping some clients with market making, to quant traders who want to pick up dev skills, to developers who want to pick up market making skills, and people who are looking to found the next thing, to different students. What we will do is that we will present the scripts and then there'll be a Q&A session. Great. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining today i'm very happy with the results of of the scripts that you build in this well good, good luck for today i hope that you get good results from the audience because we are going to have a google form and you can vote which is the strategy that you like most so well good luck for everyone and enjoy the, the session so basically it's bot camp demo day it's cohort number two scripts showcase we will first start a scripts presentation and Q&A. And then basically I'll also send you a form to do the voting. This is Barnabash and I'm going to show you my final submission script. And the name of the script is Volume Pumper. The goal with this strategy is to create as much trading volume as it can with sacrificing profits. And the idea behind this is that I, while playing around with Hummingbot, I figured out that maker fees, taker fees do count a lot. It's very hard to make a profitable strategy with high maker fees. And so most exchanges, they give you lower fees or zero fees or even negative fees, which means they are paying for you to, uh, to do trading volumes. They give you that based on your last 30 days of trading volumes. So... I figured out I would just create a very simple bot. This is very similar to the pure market making strategy, a narrowed down version of it I, uh, with a few simple differences. And so what it does, it it's just creates very tight spreads. It does this with take best bid and best ask prices and adds a tick or two on top of it. I didn't use basis points and percentages because I was using liquid more, high liquid and high volume markets such as BTC, USD to play around with it. And it was easier for me to just think of ticks in the order book rather than percentage points. <clears throat> so instead of mid price, it gets, it always sits on top of the order book compared to best bid and best ask. So yeah, and what it does, it really, you know, gets the best bid, best ask, adds or removes the maker fee from the exchange and then adds the bid spread ticks or ask spread ticks on top. So if price deviates too much, then it was just go and cancel the hanging order and create a new taker order that is closer to the current mid price. And deviation is based on mid price not on best bid and best ask. And of course, when canceling, it will take into account already orders. So it would only recreate the remaining order. Hey guys, it's Alex. Here's my strategy, optimal price for liquidity mining. And let's jump straight to the exchange. I think it will be easier to explain it there. So the main idea and purpose of my strategy is to place buy and sell orders that won't get filled immediately. And that uh, which will not get filled as long as possible. So to achieve that, we need to place orders with an optimal price. And what my strategy does, it figures out the optimal price. The first step is to, what my strategy does, it fetches the historical market trade data. You can see it on the screen here. Yeah. So first it will fetch all this data and then it will find out which order was with the high, yeah, it will find out the highest order that was placed among all these orders. So let's say that, yeah, right now we don't see high numbers here, but let's say that it is, it was like 8,000 front. And the next, what it will do, it will check the bid 
and ask, ask and bid entries. It will go through each entry and it will sum up the volume of each entry until it finds out this high max trade volume that it figured out earlier. Hi, everyone. So I'll be discussing my strategy today, which is hedge cross exchange mining. So this is basically a version of cross exchange market trading, but it's highly customized with three differences. First difference is it uses hedging on perpetual futures to reduce or prevent impermanent loss. Second change is that it calculates the volatility of the markets and adjusts the spread basis points or minimum profitability between the maker price and the taker price in calculating the maker price. So basically, if the volatility is greater, there's a greater risk of slippage. So the spread basis points or minimum profitability gets increased. The other parameter is minimum the past profitability of trades. And basically, if the strategy has been very profitable, you can afford to have a narrower spread because you can then trade more and get more liquidity mining rewards in cross-exchange market making, and therefore your spreads can be smaller. If you have been very unprofitable, then you want larger spreads so you don't trade as often and so that your trades have a higher chance of being consistently profitable. So you can also think of past profitability as sort of checking how likely slippage is to occur. So on a broad level, that's strategically how it's supposed to happen. Hey everyone, this is an overview of the flexible saving script. So this script implements a directional strategy, but the point of the script is not the strategy itself, but the concept of a custodian, which I will explain shortly. If we look at the strategy, we can see that this strategy does not necessarily make use of the on tick method, but only use it to bootstrap the rest of the flow. So in a typical directional strategy, we want to listen to candlestick data from an exchange. And then on every candle that we receive, we update the strategy. And based on the output from the strategy, we decide if we want to open or close the position. So in this diagram, you can see that, for example, if the strategy tells us to open a long position and we don't have one open yet, we will first acquire funds from a custodian we will then open a position and then release funds back to the custodian. So a custodian is something that is responsible for managing your funds while they're not in active use. So for example, if we have a strategy that's dealing with the daily candles, most of the times the funds will just be sitting on your spot account. So what a custodian could do is make use of a, a savings or interest earning product on an exchange. So let's, let's look at an example. So in Binance, there is something called Binance Earn. And if we go to the simple earn page, we can see that, for example, if we put our USDT to the Binance savings account, we could actually earn daily interest on this. And this is sort of what the custodian component aims to achieve, is to make use of this extra earning products while running your strategy. It's important to note that this product is flexible, so your assets do not get locked up and they can be redeemed at any point in time. Hello, this is Alan and my script is for market making multiple trading pairs with an external feed. The number one goal of the script is to see how many uh, trading pairs we can do market making for simultaneously in one instance of coming bots. The uh, trading approach is um, unhedged, uh, which means the reference feed can, rather than being based on one pair of triangle will be based on a bunch of pairs and many triangles from different quote currencies and different exchanges blended together into a consensus price based on some machine learning, which aim to give an accurate and low volatility reference price with no added latency. Welcome to my strategy. The goal here is to create a script that captures the spread and arbitrage opportunities to act as a maker on a low liquidity exchange by placing limit orders on the order book. So when an order gets filled on the low liquidity exchange, the bot needs to hedge by placing an order on the high liquidity exchange. The hypothesis behind the script is the following. So prices on the order book of low liquidity exchanges do not reflect the true value of assets traded there. That's what I think. There are many inefficiencies in pricing assets on low liquidity exchanges. By providing liquidity to these markets, we can capture these inefficiencies and trade them many times in a day for small gains on every single trade. Hedging orders towards high liquidity exchange will limit our exposure to these trades. 
Sure. I'm going to present you the script that I've been working on during Bob Camp. So the goal was to make it possible to hedge against all inventory risk while running the cross-exchange market-making strategy. I achieved this by taking the existing strategy and implementing a means to hedge by opening and maintaining a short perpetual position. My hypothesis is that a short position can be maintained that's equal to the total base asset being held on the maker and taker exchanges. And if this is continued, monitored and maintained after filling if each order fills, then inventory risk is zero all the time. This is a demo bid for my micro price calculator that I implemented. First, I'll just be describing what the micro price is and why we might care about it as a high frequency signal. A statistic that is commonly used is the fair price, which is given the prices and sizes of the bids and asks of the order book, what is the fair price for a trading pair? Since we typically expect this value to be somewhere in the spread, a measure that is commonly used is the mid price, that is the average of the best bid and ask prices. However, a problem with the signal is that it updates relatively slowly only whenever the prices change, and it also does not include information about the relative sizes of the bids and asks. So another signal that is commonly used is the weighted mid price, where we assign weights to the best bid and ask prices according to the imbalance, the current imbalance of the order book. So when the relative size of the bids is high, then the weight of the best ask price is high and vice versa. However, the signal also has some issues. First, it tends to be pretty noisy since it changes with every change in the imbalance. And there's also not a good theoretical justification to use it as a fair price since it is not necessarily a martingale and it also possesses some other undesirable characteristics. This all brings us to the micro price, which is defined as the limit of a sequence of expected mid prices of the future. The micro price can be expressed as a simple adjustment to the mid price. So computing the micro price consists of computing the adjustments across some number of imbalance buckets from historical data and adding those adjustments back to the mid price given the current spread and the current imbalance of the order.